So it's 8.30 in the morning and I just woke up to a message from my little sister saying, wasn't yesterday your nine year sober anniversary? And I thought to myself, wait a second, it is. So it feels like I've been uh, not drinking and doing drugs for so long that uh, it's not a novelty anymore. It's actually just my life. So these anniversaries, they come along and I'm like, oh, wait, that's right. It's become the norm now for me to not drink and not party and things like this. But also I've been extremely busy and I just don't have time to think about those types of things right now. I've got a million things on my plate and, you know, under a lot of stress and, you know, working for something that I'm very passionate about. So I don't think about my uh, my past all that much anymore, which wasn't always like that. When I first went sober and went vegan, I was uh, riddled with trauma. I had nightmares every night. I was uh, always thinking about violence. I had a very bad complex PTSD. It would manifest in all different types of ways. And that's what happens when you're uh, around the gang culture for long enough. From around 14 years old, I started hanging around low-level street gangs. And then obviously, I started becoming more and more violent. Um, I was a good kid. But what happens is the environment starts to shape you. You need to defend yourself in environments like that. One way to defend yourself is to act in an offensive manner. So do something violent and people will remember it. That's what I did. Um... You know, from 16, 17, 18, I started getting more and more violent, smashing bottles on people's heads. And I think I was around 17, the first time I'd stab someone with um, a bayonet. It gets worse and worse and worse as, as you get older and as uh, you start drinking more and taking drugs and getting involved in just higher level street violence. But around 20 years old, I started hanging around with um, the big boys then. It was more of a, the higher level organized crime figures. Uh, I was around some of the most dangerous underworld figures in in Adelaide and in Australia. So that was my life from 20 onwards. I then became a part of a very notorious high-level gang. I don't mention names. It was very serious and things were happening all the time. You'd, you would hear of shootings and, uh, you know, it was just... Uh, can't really get into the details, which I don't need to get into details. You can just... Uh, maybe you could just put one and two together. But with that environment comes addiction. And with trauma comes more addiction and more drugs. And you use drugs to deal with the environment. And it's just, just the vicious circle. And you deal drugs to get more drugs. And before you know it, you're a full-blown addict and you don't realize it. And alcohol was one of those drugs that helps you deal with anxiety and, and helps you handle social situations. And my family all like to drink and my friends all like to drink. And I was a big drinker. I used to drink every single day day often and my story goes I got I got busted with a gun and people like say oh you know you got busted with a gun why did you have a gun well you know other people had guns if you don't have a gun when other people who are dangerous have guns and they might be looking for you then you're pretty silly in that world you need to uh if of course you might say we'll just go to the police but that's just not an option in that world you don't go to the police you defend yourself you protect yourself and you know, that's uh, that type of world. You you either have a weapon on you, you protect yourself, or you run to the police and you never show your face in the neighborhood ever again. So that wasn't me. So my, my option was to defend myself. I had a firearm on, on me, and it was for self-defense, basically. It was for my own protection. And, uh, you know, I got caught with that firearm. I went to prison briefly, um, and then I got released on house arrest to await my full sentence. On house arrest, I was still using drugs, alcohol, got really obese, did a juice fast, found this juice fasting guy on YouTube, got a seed planted about, you know, eating animals and karma, stayed in the gangs, stayed in the high level gangs, got locked up. When I was locked up, I got sober, see my life with new eyes. You know, I know this story so well now, so said it so many times, but, uh, you know, see my life with new eyes. I've seen all the people in there, you know, good people and not so good people, but they were doing Long stints in prison, some people doing life over one silly mistake, and I just like started looking at the gang culture, started looking at prison system, and I was like, I don't want to spend the rest of my life here. When I got released, I was released on parole. I couldn't take any drugs or alcohol, so uh, because I, I didn't want to give a dirty urine test and uh, end up back in prison because I didn't like prison. I didn't, I didn't like being surrounded by people all the time. I'm, I like being by myself, and you have no privacy in prison. It's just a matter of time before something hectic goes down. You know, it's just the guards tell you what you can and can't do. They strip search you randomly. You know, you just be out in the yard and they'll just take you into a room and make you strip down naked and squat over a mirror. You have no autonomy in there. So I didn't want to go back there, but I went vegan after criticizing my mum about smoking and she said, kind of look in the mirror in, in her own way. And uh, yeah, I went vegan that day, uh, November the 1st, 2013. You know, I've been sober and vegan ever since. 
Now, the biggest culprits for me were alcohol, methamphetamine. Maybe secondary to those two would be like Xanax and barbiturates. Alcohol and methamphetamine were my, my worst drugs, I'd say. They, they're the ones who really, that really got me. How have I stayed sober from them for nine years, you might ask? Well, there's a combination of factors that go into it. And uh, the number one factor, I would say, is to remove yourself from the friend group that use drugs and alcohol. Uh, it's change your environment would be my number one tip. When I got went to prison, my environment changed. I couldn't get access to drugs uh, in there. I could, but it's kind of frowned upon in my gangs. I didn't want to be the, the druggie in the gang, you know. So when I got to prison, you have no privacy. So I wasn't going to take any drugs and that in there. So if you're in an environment now where there's drugs around you, I get it. Some people can't change their environment. They're in a horrible circumstance. And I get that, that, that this advice is not for you. But if you have the freedom to be able to change your environment, that that is what I would recommend. The next thing would be to have a focus. Uh, Exercise is a very, very good one because that, that gives you sort of a dopamine rush. Your heart pumping, your blood pumping, gives it can give you like this tingling feeling when you when you do really hard cardio, and that is kind of a replacement for drugs. So I recommend like getting on a on a bike and just riding for you know a hundred kilometers and you know hiking for hours and hours or going to the gym and boxing boxing for hours. I used to box for hours. I, I boxed for a year straight when I got out of prison. I was pretty good. At, one point I was boxing four times a week and I was running on the other days and I was cycling everywhere um, because I needed to keep my mind just stimulated. Exercise is amazing for trauma. Just exercise your ass off if you're an addict and you want to get sober. The friend group thing is huge for alcohol because it only takes one beer in my opinion, which is why I don't give myself any beers. I don't even have a sip of wine at Christmas time. I don't touch alcohol. It's not even like an option for me. If you are an alcoholic, you give yourself permission once, you basically opened up the floodgates. If you've never had willpower before, what makes you think you're gonna just develop it? You have to stay away from these substances completely. That is my, don't, uh, people say, why can't you just have one or two drinks? Can I just have one or two drinks? You know, no, it's not like that. It's like if you're you know, on a diet, you just have one or two donuts. It just doesn't work like that. And now nine years sober, I can speak with authority on this, I think, you know, cause uh, I was one of the worst. And now I'm clean. So it all comes down to a decision and you have to make a decision. You have to think to yourself, do I want to throw everything away to get drunk or to get on drugs? That's what I weigh up because I ruined my entire life and I was on a one-way ticket to prison forever, killing myself, uh, killing someone else, going clinically insane, losing your whole family. They're your options. There's not many good options with drugs and alcohol. I'm not as concerned of about uh, psychedelics and things people do to for a purpose to enhance their consciousness or to help treat trauma. I'm talking about illicit substances that do nothing but cause addiction and just ruin your life. Some people can have a couple beers, no problem. That's not me. And I think you'll work it out that that's not you too, if that's the case. But it's a decision between ruining your life and having a life that you deserve and you only get one life. I think I've still got friends to this day who are still doing exactly the same thing. And one day they're going to wake up, they're going to be 50, sitting in a prison cell. And uh, I didn't want that to be me. You don't get any other chances after that. I was running the gauntlet like that every single day. So focusing on something other than myself was a big part of this as well. So focusing on the animals, the anim what the animals are going through, the suffering of the animals. And I think self-care is important and thinking about yourself is important to a certain extent. But I wouldn't get like self-absorbed because that leads to depression and that leads to just me, me, me. But if you focus on, like, say, human beings outside of yourself, helping the youth, I wanted to get into to youth work or helping other people pull, pull themselves out of gangs. And But for me, it was the animals. The animals, I felt, were suffering more than any human in my vicinity. And that was... I really didn't understand the extent of the suffering till I'd been an animal rights activist for a little while. And, you know, just focusing on helping those beings and developing my platforms and every single day working to expose what happens to animals and persuade people to choose a different lifestyle has been a massive, massive part of why I've stayed sober because that's way more important to me than, than getting drunk and going down the pub and having a big fight, you know, like I just, it doesn't do it for me anymore. When I first put up my first post about being six months sober, it was pretty funny, you know, because I just got out of prison and I was one month out of prison, but six months sober and like, I remember people going, ah, oh, you know, this is just a phase. One year sober, oh, this is just a phase. He's going to go back on it. Like, he's going to get back on it. 
two years sober. I remember making my first two years sober video and there I was like, you know, compl like <laughs> I was a bit nervous and I was, you can tell like I, was, I definitely wasn't as confident as I am now. Then I had three years sober, four years sober, five years sober. And I remember thinking halfway through like about five years, I was like, maybe I can make it to 10 years. You know, then I had my six years sober, seven years sober, eight years sober last year. And here we are nine years sober. Next year is my 10 years sober. And that's a huge milestone. That'll be a decade. Just no self-caused problems, no real self-caused caused problems. I mean, I still, obviously you still get problems, but nowhere near like the ones that I used to have. My message to anyone who's trying to get sober, you deserve better. Live a life of purpose outside of yourself. Help others. If you're in, those, in a situation where you can have choice, some people, they need help because they're in a horrible situation. Um, they might be on the streets. They might have no family. They might not know where to start, but many people can help themselves. And I think that's a, a big takeaway message that you need to help yourself. You need to pull yourself out of this. No one's gonna actually help you. You can't rely on other people to do this for you. You have to make that decision. When you take your life into your own hands, you start living your life. Your life doesn't happen to you. They let the addiction take them and the next minute they're in prison or next minute they lost everything or next minute they've lost their life. Be in control of your life. Be in control of the decisions you make. You gotta be strong. You gotta be so strong. You have to be stronger than those drugs and that alcohol and your friends like wanting to pull you into their hole with them. You know, you have to be really strong. You have to be by yourself for a while. If you knew me back then, you would have thought I was lost hope. There was no hope for me. But just some of my friends thought like, you know, he's gone. My family as well, my poor family, mum, brothers, sisters. If you knew me back then, you would have thought there's no way I would have made it to where I am now. So the reason I'm saying that is because if I can do it, then so can you. Here's to my nine years sober. Thank you to everyone who supported my animal rights activism, my journey, who's been with me since day dot. Thank you so much. I appreciate it a lot. And let's just hope I don't miss my 10 years sober and wake up the next morning and go, what the hell? But thank you, everyone. And I'll see you all in the next video. Stay sober. Be vegan. Anyway, be the change you want to see in the world. Good quote. Try to make a difference, you know, like you want to take action in your life and, you know, affect others around you positively and, and that's a gift you can sort of give back. It's never too late to change your ways. It's never too late. So whatever hole you're in, you can pull yourself out of that, man, because anything is possible.